my god. Got him. That's a big one. Good fish, dude. Oh my god. Gotcha. Got you. Got you. Get up here. Hello? What? Oh my god. I ain't good. Is she hurt? Oh god. Yeah, that's really bad. Welcome back to the channel guys, excited for today's adventure. We're out here on a big lake today. We just put the boat in. Uh, we're gonna be taking the bass boat out here to a big bridge that runs across the lake. Um, I was out here last year at about this same time and I caught a bunch of different fish species and that's kind of just what I was wanting to do today. There's, there's white bass, there's stripers, there's walleyes, there's largemouth, spotted bass, drum, like literally everything lives out here underneath this bridge. I don't know exactly if it's gonna be good today, but I'm definitely willing to find out. We got a long rip ahead of us, but it's a beautiful lake, it's a beautiful day. Got a little bit of a light breeze. It should be a good boat ride and I think we're catching some fish. So if y'all are excited to join along with us on today's adventure, do us a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, let's get out there and let's see what we can put in the boat today. Let's go. After a short rip, we've made it here to our destination. We got this big bridge going across the lake. There's one, two, three, four, five different pylons. And it seems like at any given time, there's at least a school of fish on one of them. So we might have to kind of do some exploring to figure out which one is holding the most fish. Hopefully they all hold fish and hopefully they have some good ones, but we have all the gear I think necessary to catch them. So it's just a matter of going to the pylons and just fish there and see if we can catch them. So spot number one below the bridge out there on the main lake did not go according to plan. There were fish and there were some fish actually busting um, whenever we first pulled up, but they were not wanting to bite. And um, I couldn't get anything else to bite really. So we decided to pull the plug on the area. We came below the dam, which is down there. There's a boat ramp right here we launched at. We got another bridge back here behind us, which I'm kind of hoping for the same sort of deal. Um, fish will tend to stack up here whenever, whenever they have the water generating, which they have today. So we're gonna kind of mess around back here behind us and see if we can't get into something. We've, I've had some gigantic fish uh, bite my lure down here that I haven't been able to hook up with, so I'm hoping maybe get some redemption today, but only time will tell. Let's figure out. Oh my God. I don't know what that was. That was a little smaller. I was, I was like, is there something, I was like, is there something ball in it? Yeah. That wasn't a Donkey Kong, but we got some, oh, he's not. Oh my God, got him. That's a big one. Good fish, dude. Good fish. I don't know if it's a hybrid or a striper, but that's a nice fish. Oh yeah, baby. Yeah, baby, come on, come on, come on, I'm coming back here. Come on, baby, he smashed it. Smashed it, is that a striper or a hybrid? It's a good one. Oh, I think it's a stripe. Woo, yeah, baby. Come on, come on, baby. Stay on there, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. A striper! Let's go! <laughs> yeah, it's on top water. Oh, I was not expecting that to happen that fast. Let's go. 
Guys, I think that was my third cast in my topwater bed. I actually had to bite the cast before I threw it kind of back in the same general area. And this striper came up and smoked it. This is the first striper I've caught down here in a while. I've had some mega daddy stripers uh, bite my bait in the past and come off. Like I'm talking 20 to 40 pounders. So that's awesome right there. He's probably like a six or seven pounder. And what we're gonna do is I think we're actually gonna throw him in the live one, take him home and eat him tonight. We're looking to catch some fish to take home and eat. And this is just a beautiful fish. Just gorgeous, and he fought so good. I'm eager to get back in there so we can catch some more. I'm loving this cloud cover too. If we get some more cloud cover like this, they might go crazy. What a cool fish. Oh my gosh, got you, got you. Stay on, stay on. I don't know how big he is, he's running right at me. Splash looked big. About the same size as the last one, honestly, but it's still a good one. Oh my gosh, he smoked it. That's another great size striper, stay on there. Stay on there. Stay on there. You got me, dude? Yeah! <laughs> Let's go! Boom! Second fish of the day. Another beautiful striped bass. He might be slightly smaller than the first one, but not by much. He's, I feel like he's probably like a four and a half, four-ish pounder. I don't know. The other one could be five or six, but I really don't know. But he, what I do know is that he came up and obliterated that pencil popper. It's the deal right now. We've only been fishing for about 10 minutes. We've got two really beautiful stripers to show for it. I mean, these are some of the most beautiful striper I've seen in a while. I haven't really seen striper in a while, but just the colors on these guys coming out of this river today are just gorgeous. They got hints of blue. They got that olive green top, really dark, beautiful lateral stripes. Nothing beats a striper on top water. What a beautiful fish and gonna be delicious tonight too. Got you! Get up here. Oh, we got a new species. On the jerk bait. All right. Ah. Swapped it up to a little finesse jerk bait and we got our second species of the day. That is a white bass and a good eating size one too. We'll throw them in the live well with the stripers. Uh, the previous cast, I had what looked like a bigger striper and another one of these guys chasing it. I swapped to a little finesse jerk bait, and he was all about it. I was working a little bit fast, I slowed it down, and he came up and just smashed it. That's awesome. Got him. Another white bass on the jerk bait. That's fun. That's awesome. I'd prefer to catch stripers, but I'll take these white bass all day long because they're going to eat that jerk bait like that. Just a little finesse I've been throwing in the creeks all summer long for smallies and largemouth. They're out here feeding on small bait fish, so I figured it'd be a good option for them. Just fell out. Let them to the box. We almost got enough for a big dinner now. Who's calling me? Hello? What? Oh my god. That ain't good. Is she hurt? Like how bad sliced open? Like guts hanging out? 
We gotta go. Oh God. That's so bad. Can you see it? Yeah, that's really bad. All right, guys, man, do we have some explaining to do? We're back here at the house. We're here at the cleaning table. We've got our fish here on the table, um, but our fishing trip got uh, ended very abruptly. So we were fishing. We were actually about to make our way back down below the bridge where I caught the two striper on top water just to kind of finish out the day. Whenever I got a phone call from Jay and she was in a frenzy, super hysterical, upset. I was like, what's going on? What's wrong? What's wrong? And so if you guys have been following the channel for a while, you know that we have two little dogs. We got Junebug and Buggy, both little black and white, little muttly looking dogs. And um, they had gotten out of our fence and we're not sure what happened to Junebug, but basically Junebug got sliced from right here all the way down here and skinned. So it, yeah, it's exactly what it sounds like. It looks like someone skinned her or hacked her with a machete. I don't, nobody did that to her, but um, something happened. It was not good, so we didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't know like what was going to happen to her, if she was even going to be okay. Um, luckily, she's going to be okay. It's going to be in a pretty big procedure, but she's stable. Um, she's not really at risk of losing her life or anything like that, but it's a big deal. But she got skint up really bad. We have some pictures. We'll throw them up here. Uh, but yeah, it's, it wasn't good. So we got off the water in a hurry. We're back here, like I said, she's at the vet. She's gonna be there overnight. We're all good, but we have our fish we have to take care of. Um, they really weren't in condition where we could throw them back. So we have them here. We're gonna clean them up and we're going to cook them up and they're gonna be really yummy. But we're just, we're just so thankful that Junebug is okay and gonna be okay. But with that, we're gonna clean these fish and then we're gonna eat them. Okay, so we're going to show you guys how we like to clean our striper. Like our striper season is rapidly approaching. We do most of our striper fishing in the fall and winter months. Um, and I feel like a lot of y'all probably target striper that time of year also. We're luckily, lucky to able to get this one so early in the year. And this is a perfect eating size. It's probably four and a half, five pounds. And that's usually the size we like to keep. I'm gonna show you guys how we fillet them to make them the best for eating later on. So I have an electric fillet knife. We're just gonna clean like you clean any other fish. They're pretty streamlined. It's pretty easy to get the fillet off. So we're gonna start by making a cut on the back side of the head and go all the way down to the middle spine. Now striper are kind of a rigid fish. So you kind of got to kind of saw in there a little bit, but once you get going, you're good. But now we're going to run the knife laterally down the side, all the way to the tub. We're not going to cut all the way through. You can if you want to, but I think it's easier if you don't. Stop right there before the tail. We're going to flip it over. So what we have is the fillet still attached to the skin, so we want to remove the meat from the skin. And like I said, I like to keep it all attached so you can grab a hold of the bottom part of the tail and just take the meat off. Like I said, it's just a little bit easier. Okay, so our fillet is removed from the skin. We're gonna flip it over and I'm gonna show you guys something. So what you have is the fillet, but you see this dark red meat, we want to remove that. And there's actually a trick that you can do while you're filleting it where you don't have to do it afterwards like we're about to do. But first I want to show you guys how I like to remove the red meat in case you have some on your fillet. But first I need to get the rib cage out. So we'll pull that rib cage out first really quick. Pretty easy. Okay, let's address the red meat. So it's a pretty thin piece of meat. So I'm just gonna run the knife really, really thinly down the filet and we're gonna take that off. And trust me guys, if you don't want your fish tasting super fishy and oily, you're gonna wanna remove that. If you like that taste, leave it in. But I don't really like it that much. Okay, there's one pass and you can see I was really just targeting the red meat. We got that off. We have a little bit right here. You can even go back later on in the kitchen with just a regular hand knife to pull off, but we'll just take it off with the electric knife since we're already out here. We're really not losing very much meat at all. And it's, like I said, definitely gonna be worth it in the end. We've got this red meat right in the middle. That's kind of the main bloodline. And you can 
kind of finagle it like I was doing just then, or you can just cut it directly out. So we'll just trim it straight down through there. And then we'll trim this piece off. And boom, there is our finished product. We have a couple of pieces off that one filet. We'll definitely trim this up back inside when you get them all rinsed off. There's still a little bit of red meat here we can take off afterwards too, but it's really not that much where you'll even be able to notice it, but we got the majority of the red meat off. So put it here in the bowl for now. Let's do the other side and I'll show you guys how I like to kind of avoid having to trim it off as much um, afterwards and just do it, you know, while we're actually doing that initial filet. Okay, so now we're gonna take this filet off, but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna tilt the knife up just a little bit and not cut the meat directly off of the skin. Just kind of leave a little bit of meat on the skin. So I barely lifted up on the knife blade. And actually there's a little bit more red meat on this one than I thought there was going to be. This fish could just had a little bit more of a stronger bloodline. But more times than not, you'll have a lot less to deal with, especially this top piece. But again, it's really easy to get off. I wasn't expecting to have that much on there, but we'll go ahead and do the same procedure as we did with the previous filet. Pull the ribs out. We're just gonna trim that red meat off. I'm gonna just cut down the bloodline. There you have it guys, another whole filet. Definitely needs some rinsing off. Striper are pretty strong um, tasting fish, even if you get the red meat out. So we're gonna rinse them off really good, get all the nasty stuff out of the filet and they're gonna be really, really delicious since we're all done with it all. Now we're gonna go ahead and clean the remainder of our fish, the last striper and the two white bass, and we'll see you guys back in the kitchen. Okay, so we have some catching up to do. Um, when we were fishing, you know, our fishing trip got ended abruptly whenever she called me in, in a, a frenzy, a yeah. panic. <laughs> she was hysterical because, and for good reason, um, something very traumatic happened to our dog, Junebug, and it turns out the vet thinks that she was actually hit by a car um, luckily, you know, it didn't kill her, but it did some damage. And, um, as y'all have seen from the pics a little bit, um, she got a huge chunk of her, like, ripped off. Like, like she got, it's like she got skinned. Like, from shoulder down to her entire midsection got skinned. Yeah, and, but we have her now. And she's doing great. She stayed at the vet for, was it two days or three days? Three days. Okay. She stayed at the vet for three days. They took amazing care of her. She got over a hundred stitches. And she's hanging there. She's on some medications, making her a little bit drowsy, but she's doing good. Are you okay, Junebug? She said no. She said no. I'm sleepy. <laughs> Buggy's like. No, it was so bad. And like, I can't. I can't even imagine. Like Jay just walked up on her like that. Yeah. I mean, just all of her skin just. Oh, well, just I was dangling. looking for the dogs. I couldn't find them. I was calling them, and I found her on the other side of the fence, laying down by the lake. And I couldn't tell if she was alive or what, because she's a very white dog, and then yeah. like her midsection was all just red. And I was like, oh my gosh. Awful. Oh, it's we don't even know how they got out. Like we have a fenced in yard. We got a nice like new chain link fence. Like we just don't know how they even got out. So we're still trying to figure that out. We've looked around and we can't figure it out. But now we're like taking them out on leashes. <laughs> yeah, like they're not even allowed to go outside and roam around anymore. They're in trouble. They're grounded like big time. Like Buggy had to go to the vet like two weeks ago because she like stabbed her foot on something. It's always something with these dogs. But. <laughs> Um, I think honestly, had it happened to Buggy, she probably just would have rolled over dead because she's yeah. not, she's not a, Buggy's she's not a, a tough dog. She's a weenie dog. Um, but Junebug is super tough, and um, you know the vet thinks she's gonna be just fine. She's gonna take a while. I mean, it was like really like traumatic, like as about as bad as it can be without actually yeah. getting hit and dying. It was so bad. Um, so we're just really thankful to the vet for taking care of her, and we're just so glad that she is going to be okay. But she's wrapped in bandages. We have to take her to the vet like every couple of days now to get her drained and. Like I said, it's going to be a long recovery process, but she's going to be okay. <laughs> and that's all that matters. Yeah. Poor baby. Poor baby. Dude. Dude, but... All right, guys. So a couple of days have passed since we caught our fish. We're here in the kitchen now. We're actually going to be cooking them up and making some delicious fish tacos. Striper meat is like my favorite medium to work with when making fish tacos. Because if you take a look at it, 
here's one of the big fillets we got off of one of our striper. You can see these big flakes that come off of that. That's exactly what's gonna happen whenever we cook it in the skillet. It's just gonna flake apart really big. And it kind of has some consistency of like having, of even like chicken tacos. Um, but they're better in my opinion. We got all the fixings, but first we gotta get it kind of prepped. We're gonna throw it in the skillet, get it cooked up, and then we'll toss it all together and have ourselves an epic uh, fish taco meal. So let's get to getting these fillets finished and ready to go into the skillet and uh, let's get to eating. Okay, we're heating up our skillet. We're just gonna throw some butter in there. I don't know how many tablespoons that is. It's a good bit, probably three tablespoons. You just need something to kind of butter the pan with. You can use olive oil, vegetable oil, whatever you like to use to cook your fish in, but I like to start with some butter. So we'll let that guy kind of render down or melt down and we'll throw our fillets in there and start cooking them. All right, our skillet appears to be hot. Let's start adding some these fillets to the skillet. Not hearing an immediate sizzle, but that's all right. We'll get cooking here in just a second. And I'm just gonna fill the entire skillet up with as much of this as possible. It doesn't really matter if they're on top of each other because we're just gonna let them flake apart on their own anyways. Hopefully it'll all fit. Okay, so we've already given our fish a good flip, and right now all we're trying to do is get the fish cooked all the way through, and then we'll start adding the seasoning, and we'll show you guys how we pull the fillets apart. You don't want to go in there and just start just like jackhammering them. You just want to kind of peel them apart nice and easy. You don't want them to get all mushy. You can kind of see how it's easily just kind of nudging it with the spatula, and it's just kind of falling apart. You want them to stay in those bigger chunks. Okay, we're ready for taco season. This is just standard, straight up, cheap taco seasoning. And you can season it however you want to. This way we like it. If I can figure out how to open it, we'll be in business. There it is. I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. We're cooked all the way through. I'm gonna put it on kind of like a medium low, medium high. Shake it on top of the fish. And then, I'm gonna hit it with some olive oil. All right, man, this smells so good. We've got that look we're looking for. It's not all mushed up, we got big flakes, and it smells so dang delicious. Okay, so we finished cooking with the fish. I just added some taco shells to the oven to cook it, but while we're waiting on the taco shells, I'm actually gonna whip up some, up some blender salsa. So we'll get that whipped together, show you kind of guys what that looks like, and then maybe by the time that's done, we'll be ready to get the taco shells out. Alright guys, so we've got everything ready to build our striper tacos. We've got the shells out of the oven. We have all of our stuff to garnish tacos with. And then of course we have our beautiful striper meat. Just want to grab a shell. And these are very basic fish tacos. Like any of y'all can make this. You can spice it up as much as you want to. I like to keep it simple. I'm just gonna fill the tortilla shell up with some meat. Probably could have got the little bit wider shells to make it a little bit easier, but that'd be alright. Next we are going to add some avocado. Really love avocado on my tacos. We're just gonna slather it with some avocado. We got a bunch of avocados today, no need to be finicky with that. Pinch off a couple of cilantro leaves. Okay, next I'm gonna hit with a shot of lime. Just personal preference. I've also got the cilantro lime, a little salt. Or pepper, I don't even know what this is. I think it's a pepper. It's pepper salt. 
Shake a little bit of that bad stuff on there. And then I'm gonna top it off with some classic Taco Bell hot sauce. Just a little bit. Gotta be easy with you. Use any hot sauce you like. This is what we had in the cabinet and that's what we're doing. Oh, yes. Take a gander at that right there. Looks so good. Let's do the official taste test. Mm. That's delicious. I am so glad we were able to wrangle up a couple of stripers down there at the river. I mean, it doesn't get much better than when it comes to fish tacos. It is so, so good. And like I said, you can make them any way that you want to, but in my opinion, I think that striper is like the perfect fish to make tacos with. So anyways, we got a big spread right here. We got a full house people are gonna feed. So we're going to kick back, relax, enjoy this meal. And um, yeah, I can't wait. But anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us out there on the river. I wish that we could have stayed out there a little longer, maybe caught a couple more couple more striper, but luckily we were able to get what we did when we did before we head, head out and go check on Junebug. We're so thankful that she's gonna be all right, and we're also thankful to have this nice spread of food here to enjoy tonight. So if y'all enjoy the video and you wanna see some more Catch Cook videos, be sure to let us know down in the comments section. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of our future wild and crazy fishing adventures. I'm Cole Harkin, and I will see you on the next one. Bye, guys.